Well, where is this place? Is this it? Well, you don't see a lot of signage. It says authentic Japanese, not too sweet, breads and sweets. Yeah. And the exterior itself does not look sweet. And then the sandwich board, it's so small, you got to walk right up to read it. We're on a busy... Steve, welcome back for the second season of Project Bakeover. Holy cow. You yeah. know, this series is so different from any other food series on the air in terms of reality TV, because it, it, there's such a strong emotional element to it, because not only are you helping these people, you're not competing with them, you're helping, you're guiding, but you're giving them their livelihood and their self-confidence back. Mm -hmm. Is it emotional for you? Um, yeah, oh, oh, absolutely. I, I, think, I think why the show is so great to work on is it's real. So, it's not scripted. We go in with a plan and that plan can change on a dime. And we have to be able to uh, pivot and go a different direction. I think with Tiffany and myself, because this is what we do on a daily basis when we're not on TV, we have the confidence and experience to execute it. And in the culinary world, even though it's a big world, it's a small industry. And we know how tough it is to run a restaurant, to run a bakery. And so what I what I love about the show is I love sharing my knowledge. And I do that in my shop with my chefs on a regular basis. And I was fortunate enough to work for chefs in the past that did that. And I think that if a bakery needs help, um, because we're in the same field, um, I, I, I will give them 110% of what I know. Um, and even if I don't know something, I'll research it or I'll ask advice to share that knowledge. And I think because it's such a, a tough, tough business, um, I want to see bakery owners succeed. And this is the perfect opportunity for with me and TV is to allow this to happen. The only interesting thing I'm picking up with this storefront yeah. is the fact that your bear bank is identical to the buns. I want to put an animal bun in my animal purse. Well, I want to see these animal buns, so let's go in and meet her. Well, I had something similar happen last weekend when I made a lemon elderflower cake with the wrong flour. I used whole wheat, organic. And but nothing wrong it with was, that. It, they loved it. It wasn't yeah. quite cake consistency, but it was something good. <laughs> Some of the greatest recipes were made by fluke, trial and error, failure and um like i said um with the great chocolate showdown these uh competitors will come up and say oh i've made you a jacon sponge and we taste it and we're like no you didn't <laughs> but whatever you created keep that recipe because you you're on to something <laughs> and that is what i love about cooking um you're constantly learning you're pushing the boundaries in my pastry shop it's um, what I try to teach my chefs is we have a tempering machine. So oh. a new chef comes in as a chocolatier and they're like, oh, I'm a chocolatier. Well, not really because you use a tempering machine. It does all the work for you. So what, what I do with my chefs when they first come in, if they say they're a chocolatier, I get them to temper chocolate by hand. And the majority of them don't know how to because in school now they use machines. And so what I why I do that is for the simple reason, the fact that machinery will break and it always does and when it breaks what do you do and chocolate and pastry it all depends on your environment the temperature the humidity and if you understand that knowledge on cooking you can make anything happen if you don't you get stranded and you're like oh my chocolate isn't working what do i i can't do it i can't I'm like nothing's working but if you understand the fundamentals behind it and don't always rely on the machinery then, then you're set yourself up for success, especially in a bakery, because you have to every day pivot on some angle when owning a business, whether it's in the kitchen, customer service, your financials, power goes out, there's a flood, you know, there's all these things you have to think about. There's a lot of savory in these showcases, but I don't see much sweet. Tons of unique flavors. And over here, cute little bread. Look at those chicks. And those bears. The food is lost in these massive showcases because it's the same color as everything else. All right, that leads me into my big important question. Why is chocolate so wonderful, so delicious, so <laughs> ooh, really, really good? 
I, I consider chocolate one of the wonders of food because one, you can't recreate it in greenhouses. And two, oh, there are so there there's so many different types of chocolates out there and flavor profiles. It's kind of like wine and coffee. So it depends where it grows, uh, the altitude, what's growing next to it. Uh, we have, for instance, in our shop a chocolate because we use Valrona. Um, a chocolate called Manjari. It's a 64% chocolate and it's very acidic. So it goes really well with Yum. red fruits like raspberries, blackberries. Well, that chocolate, that tree is growing next to uh, other types of trees like lemons and limes. So it takes on those flavors. It's like coffee, um, your soil, what, 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 what type of soil it is. And when you understand that about chocolate, you can start plain in in adding spices and herbs and all the those oh. those other flavors once you get that knowledge and then you can have fun with chocolate if you can understand how to temper chocolate properly you can build show pieces if you store the show pieces properly they'll outlive us so it's it it, it really is there's so many different and, and and chocolate we all associate chocolate with sugar and and uh chocolate bars uh, chocolate goes sweet savory um, but if you go to a certain percentage on chocolate, it becomes very, very healthy for you. It's a superfood. So full of antioxidants, reduce strokes, reduce heart attacks, good for your blood flow, um, energy. You'll see a lot of fitness people now incorporating cocoa nibs and raw co cacao. And, and so, yeah, this chocolate's right. amazing tiny menus and signs everywhere. And then the retail shelving is a table. Yeah. It kind of feels like someone else's space. It doesn't have warmth to it. It doesn't have a personality. I don't dislike an open kitchen, but this one's just dark. And it just feels like it goes on forever. It actually feels like we're in a big industrial unit. A lot to do. We need to meet Keiko and find out more about it. Now you're rebuilding bakeries all across Canada with Tiffany including here in Ontario, from coast to coast. And I wonder what kind of feedback you've had, what kind of, you know, closure you've had from the bakers now mm -hmm. that the show is wrapped and ready to air. Um, every bakery and every bakery owner that we've come across at the end are so grateful. And um, they just, I think they just can't believe it's happened to them. Because um, the majority of them were going to close their doors. And it wasn't that they were doing a terrible job in the bakery. They got stuck and they didn't know how to get over the hump. And Tiff and I came in and we just added a flare and spark back into their life. Uh, like we kind of rekindled, like we added that passion back in because they had it and it, they never lost it. It was still there. It just got tied up because they, they got, they didn't know what to do. And we brought that back and we showed them the possibilities on how to get to the next level. And you know what? That's happened to me in my business. It happens all the time. And it takes me watching a high profile chef on social media create something. And then it's like, OK, I'm back. Let's go do it. Wow. I love it. Steve, thank you. I love your positive attitude and that your your life is chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> Thank I'm you so much Jonathan. for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, let's do this again. Let's do it next year. All right. Yeah, I'm Steve Hodge. Pastry and chocolate are my life. I've learned how to be the best from the best. I want to share everything I know with bakery owners that are on the brink of losing it all. I just watched my store turn upside down. I'm shaking up their menu. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> I promise you this is going to work. And bringing along interior designer Tiffany Pratt to transform their space with her signature colorful style. It's never too late to make a fresh start. It's not going to be easy. I just don't know how. You and I are going to go have a chat right now. But if they follow my advice, they'll be set for success. This is Project Bakeover.